In this video I'm going to go through question 4 from the January 2013 uh, 2014 exam paper. So question 4 is um, you've got a wide rectangular channel carries a discharge of 4 meters cubed per square per, p per, per meter. The channel consists of three long reaches um, with bed slope of um, 0.008 for the first one, 0.004 for the second, you've got a critical slope in the third and you've got a sluice gate located there as well. The Manning's end for all three reaches is you can take as 0.016. So similar to the 2013, it says part A, sketch the possible profiles that can occur and work out which one will actually will occur. Yep. So that's what we're going to do is part A first. So part A. We're going to write down the parameters we know. So we know Q, small Q is 4 meters cubed per square per meter n is equals to 0.016 and then I'm just going to draw the reach so first reach followed by a second reach followed by the third reach so it's saying this is 0 0.008 this one is not point four, and this one is s not is equals to s c. So it's critical slope. Yep, and then you've got a sluice gate here as well. So that's what we've been given in the question. So the first thing again with this type of question, you have to work out what y c and y n is. So first of all, we'll work out what YC is. Fairly straightforward. It's small q squared over g cube root, and then you do four squared over nine point eight one cube rooted, and you'll get one point one seven seven one one meters. Yep. <clears throat> so that's YC. Now you have to work out what YN is. Now you work out what YN is by using the Manning's equation. So Q equals 1 over N R to the 2 over 3 times S to the half times A. So again in this question it says it's a wide channel. So it says it's a wide channel. So straight away you can um, uh, manipulate this equation. So R is equals to Y we get it's a wide channel. Yep. So if you can rewrite this equation again equals 1 over N Y to the 2 over 3 S to the half times A <clears throat> area oops is just b times y so if I rewrite that again q equals 1 over n y to the 2 over 3 s to the half times b times y because in the question we were given small q not big q we can manipulate this further so big q is just small q times b equals 1 over n y to the 2 over 3 s to the half um, times b times y so the b cancels and you get left with q equals 1 over n y to the 2 over 3 s to the half and then just left with y so you collect the y terms and the final equation becomes 1 over n y to the 5 over 3 so you're collecting 2 over 3 plus y to the power of 1 s to the half yep then you rearrange for y n and you get q n over square root s that's all cubed 
on to the oh. five. So that is your equation for y n. So now you can work out what y n one is. So you do four times. 0.016 divided by the slope in the first reach which is 0.008 that gives you 0.81805 meters and then again you do the same yn2 so again you do 4 times 0 0.016 square root 4 point. Now this is a slope in the second reach. Yep. Now that gives you Two point zero zero nine five meters. So you've worked out the normal depth in reach one and the normal depth in reach two. You can, you don't work out the normal depth in reach three because um, it's critical slope. Yep. Yeah? So now you've got Y C. You've got Y N. Now you can. Uh, um, sketch the possible profiles that that will occur <clears throat> so if you draw out the channel again So we worked out YC first, so just going to draw YC. Yep. So that's YC. Yep, so in the first, so YC is 1.1771. 1 so Y1 in the first reach is 0 0.8, so it's lower than YC. So it goes here. That's YN1. YN2 is 2.009, so it's higher than YC. So it goes here. Yep. So now you've drawn your YC line and you've drawn your YN lines. Now you have to sketch which profiles can occur. So if you take each reach separately, so the flow is coming down in reach 1, but in reach 2 the flow is higher. So in reach 1 the flow has to increase for it to meet the flow in reach 1. So you, the profile in reach 1 has to be increasing. Yeah. So the profile that will occur then is an S1. Yeah. Now again, we do the similar thing when looking at reach 2 we look at reach 2 so again the flow is going to become critical so it needs to meet the YC line so the flow has to come down. So the, the flow that will do that, the profile that comes down, is an M2. Now, in the third reach, you've got flow backing up behind a sluice gate, so the water depth will be increasing. So the water depth which increases on a critical slope is a C1. And then again, the flow under the sluice gate, the flow under the sluice gate will increase again so it'll do something like that so it'll be a C3 and then finally here because it goes steep to mild depending on where the flow is at you can also get 
and M3, yeah, because that is also increasing to meet y y um, YN2. So you can either get S1, M3, M2, C1, or C3. So those are the possible profiles, yeah. That can occur, yeah. Which definitely show that that can occur, this one can occur, that one occur, can occur. But we're not too sure about if it'll be an S1 or an M3. And the reason for that is because a hydraulic jump occurs in this channel. Because this is a steep channel, because YC is higher than YN. And this is a mild channel, because YN is higher than YC. So you've got a steep channel followed by a, um, a mild channel. So you've got hydraulic jump occurring in either reach 1 or reach 2. If it's in reach 1, then you're going to get an S1 curve and M3 becomes void. If it occurs in reach 2, you get an M3 curve and S1 becomes void. So the next part of the question says, in which of the reaches the hydraulic jump occur? That will allow you to work out which profiles actually occur. Yeah. So up till this point, this question, you would get full 12 marks and that would include initially writing the parameters, working out YC, working out YN by manip manipulating the equation and then actually drawing the profiles in a sketch like this that would give you the full 12 marks for that question. And then the final thing, final part B would be um, assume hydraulic jump to occur in reach one. So the equation for hydraulic jump is y one over two, one plus eight times f of r squared minus one. That's square rooted. So the first thing you need to do is work out f of r squared. Yep, so that's given by v squared over gy. And we know v equals q over a. And that is just qb over by. The b cancels and then you just get left with q, and then you just get left with I'll write it here. You just get left with q y. Yep. Now you sub this back into into this. So you get f of r squared is equals to q squared g and y cubed. <coughs> yep. So f of r squared is four squared times nine point eight one. And the y we'll be using will be 0 0.8 because we're assuming the jump to have and to occur in reach one. So it's times 0 0.818 cubed. And the answer you get is 2.979. Now, you've got everything you need, need to work out what y2 is. So again, y2 is y1 again will be 0 0.81805 divided by 2 times 1 plus 8 times 2.979 minus 1, which is equals to 1.8. Six two nine meters. Yep. So our assumption was correct because y one is equals to this and y two is one point six two. So the depth upstream downstream increases. Yep. So our assumption that the hydraulic jump occurs in reach one is correct because y two is higher than y one. So Finally, I would expect is to have a final sketch showing the S1 curve, 
M2 curve, C1 curve, and and C3 curve. So that's the final sketch I would expect. Yep. Yeah? And that would give you full marks for that question. Yep. Yeah? Because sometimes students miss out drawing this sketch. However, to gain full marks. I would expect you to initially draw the sketch with the S1 and the M3 and then finally again once you've worked out which reach the hydraulic jump occurs again redraw the sketch but with the profiles that can actually occur so an S1 will occur, an M2 will occur, C1 and then a C3 so those are the profiles that will occur so that's the end of that question hopefully that's been um, helpful